Battle Rite has been abandoned for years, its last major update being released in October of 2019, with its developer Stunlock Studios moving on to new ventures. Over those years, we haven't seen any attempts to capture what they did. Until now. Developed by new game studio Hidden Leaf Games, Fangs not only sets out to capture what made Battle Rite so special, but to define its own identity in the genre. From the minds of Steven Genzu and multiple Riot Games veterans, Fangs released as an early access title, taking in feedback from players before its plans to launch on iOS, Android, and home consoles. After playing over a dozen hours of it over the past couple weeks, I have to say, the mixed reception from Steam users surprises me. I've been having a lot of fun with the game and think it has a lot of positive aspects that are already showing a lot of potential. In terms of gameplay, I already think Fang stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with Battle Right. Combat is fast and fluid, with every character having unique playstyles, even if they're in the same categories. Both Brutus and Kiana are melee carries, but play completely different from each other, Brutus being more of a team-fighting bruiser, while Kiana is more of a pick tank who pulls people into the team and freezes them for massive damage. The artifact and character-specific heirloom systems give all the characters tons of variety of gameplay and strategy, greatly expanding what you can do with the character static kits. For example, Brutus could go his standard bruiser build, but you could also be a single-target backline killer, putting heirlooms into your leap to jump in and out of combat without issue. It all depends on what the game needs, and leads to very interesting playstyles. A new player starts off with only a few heirlooms and artifacts, so they don't get extremely overwhelmed by all the different options. The general feel of Fangs is top-notch, with fun, fast-paced movement, fantastic animation work, and some great sound design. The combat of Fangs is great, and I can only see the introduction of new characters making it more fun than it already is. Where the gameplay strays from Battle Right is with its focus on objective play rather than just straight deathmatch. There are two ways to win a round, either by pushing the payload to the opponent's side or by killing the enemy team's captain four times. Team captains are assigned at random at the beginning of each round, and on their final life, they get a bunch of buffs, so you can't just steamroll the captain back to back. There are also three different shards that can appear throughout the round, each providing a certain buff if you can capture them in either your team's base or the enemy's. If you capture it in the enemy's base, the shard is overloaded, removing the enemy team's shard buffs as well as resurrecting dead teammates. All of this can sound kind of confusing at first, but once you start playing, you'll learn the pace of a game fairly quickly. Having more than one way to win works nicely with the heirloom slash artifact system, as it allows teams to either focus more on pushing the payload or killing the captain. It also provides the opportunity for players to specialize in capturing the room buffs. Options are the name of the game in Fangs, and it provides a lot of opportunities for player expression. All this packaged into short 10 to 20 minute games. Graphically, this game ain't no powerhouse, but it looks fine. And more importantly, is visually clear enough for you to tell what's happening in any given team fight. The visual designs of the characters themselves are, ultimately, up to personal taste if you think they're pleasing or not, but they definitely draw heavy influence from MOBAs like League of Legends, which would make sense considering many of the concept artists have previously worked with Riot. As of now, the game has two currencies, being Soul Cores, which you earn from doing daily challenges and playing games, and Realm Gold, which is the game's premium currency. Soul Cores are used to buy characters, heirlooms, and artifacts. Currently, the game is very generous about giving you lots of soul cores, getting a couple hundred from daily challenges and earning 30 to 50 from each game you play, with characters only costing 500. The premium currency is used to buy cosmetics from the in-game store. The game also has a battle pass where you can earn rewards for free or pay for the premium pass in order to unlock skins and other goodies with battle pass points earned from weekly challenges. The game's monetization is pretty standard stuff when it comes to free-to-play games, and while it may be a deal breaker to some, I'll take it if it means the game can be free. Now, it being an early access game means that there are a few issues and suggestions the team could take note of. Some of the hitboxes don't really match up with the visual indicators like they should. While some of these have been tweaked, they still need some more work. I haven't encountered many bugs, but I thought I would mention one that seems fairly consistent. This bug gave me, and all my friends I played with, access to every heirloom and artifact in the game, though only appearing in actual games and not in the menus. This is a bug that still affects our games from day one. The only other thing I should mention is, I think you should be able to try characters out in the training mode before buying them. That's something I always appreciate in a game with a cast of characters to unlock. It would be really nice, especially once the game's roster increases. 
Fangs is shaping up to be really great, and I would wholeheartedly recommend at least giving it a try. Although, I do want you to keep something in mind if you do. This game is not Battle Right. Yes, this game is an Arena MOBA style game like Battle Right, but its focus on objective play rather than straight deathmatch inherently means it will operate differently. By all means, give feedback. That's the whole point of it being in early access, but try to be fair with your criticisms. Reading through many of the negative reviews on Steam, you would think this game is a completely unfinished mess, which just isn't true. And a lot of the reviews to me seem like Battle Right fans being upset it's not the exact same game. Battle Right took years of trial and error to get where it was. Hell, they even had an entire game released years before to help them make Battle Right what it was. Telling Hidden Leaf to just copy what Battle Right did doesn't help them, cause if that's all it took to be successful, then Battle Right would still be around. Looking at the development roadmap on their Twitter already shows that they are aware of certain issues and are going to change them. Since my first draft, they have already added many features people have requested, like a surrender system and further improvements to game feel. This team is passionate about making things the best experience it can be. We just need to give them the time they need to make it so.